Welcome back to Delaware Politics Explained. As always, it's your host, Manny Fleming, back at it with another video. Today, we're going to dive into the recent Attorney General election. Over the weekend, I got to meet Julianne Murray, the runner-up of the election. Today, we'll be dissecting Julianne's campaign, her opponent, Kathy Jennings' campaign, and the position they are running for. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Let's start off by talking about what position they're running for. The U.S. government has an Attorney General that oversees the United States Department of Justice, but that's for another video. Today, we're going to be focusing on the state Attorney Generals. This position exists in all 50 states. An Attorney General, also known as the People's Lawyer, holds this position to serve as Chief Legal Advisor to agencies and legislative bodies that make up their state's governments. Attorney Generals have the power to prosecute violations of state law, represent the state in legal disputes, and issue legal advice to state agencies and the legislator. Attorney Generals often set particular law enforcement priorities. Some examples of these include drug law, civil rights violation, or sex crimes. Later in this video, we'll talk about the initiatives both Jennings and Murray had during their campaign. We currently have 22 Attorney Generals from the Democratic Party, 28 from the Republican Party, and 0 from the Independent and Nonpartisan Party. The salary from each state varies, but the average salary of the Delaware Attorney General is $149,000 per year, according to Ballotpedia.org. Other state Attorney General salaries range from $82,000 to $210,000 per year. Attorney Generals are chosen in four different ways. Delaware and 42 other states elect their Attorney General into office, while the other seven states have their Attorney Generals chosen by government body. The Attorney General is appointed by the Governor in Alaska, Hawaii, New Hampshire, New Jersey, and Wyoming. In Maine, the Attorney General is chosen by state legislator. And finally, in Tennessee, the Attorney General is chosen by the state Supreme Court. Next, there are a few qualifications and requirements it takes to be an Attorney General. First is age. 35 states have a formal provision or requirement specifying minimum age, while 15 have no formal provision. Of the 35 states with this requirement, the minimum age varying is 18 to 31 years old. Next is U.S. and state citizenship. 43 states have a formal provision stating that an attorney general must be a state resident, while 7 have no formal provision. Of the 43 states that have a formal provision for age, 25 specify the length, and that varies from 30 days to 7 years. 40 out of the 50 states also require you to be a U.S. citizen. 5 states specify the length, and that varies from 1 to 10 years, while 35 states just require that you be a U.S. citizen. Next is qualified voter. 35 states have a formal provision stating that you must be a qualified voter, while 20 do not. And finally, law degree. 20 states require that an attorney general hold a law degree or have a valid license to practice law. Delaware is one of those states. Lastly, we have term length. Term length varies state to state, and of the 43 elected attorney generals, all serve four-year terms except for Maine, Tennessee, and Vermont. Maine and Vermont serve two years, while Tennessee serves an eight-year term. All states vary when it comes to term limit, but the majority have a two-term limit. Next up, let's talk about the two candidates that went head-to-head -head in the 2022 Attorney General election of Delaware. First up, we have the winner of the election, Kathy Jennings. Jennings is seven years old and is currently serving as Delaware's 46th Attorney General. Kathy was born and raised in Wilmington, Delaware, where she graduated from Mount Pleasant High School and then went on to the University of Delaware before getting her Juris Doctor from Villanova University Law School. After getting her law degree, she worked for the Delaware Department of Justice for 20 years as a state prosecutor and chief deputy attorney general. Her most notable case was successfully trying serial killer Stephen Brian Pennell, also known as the Route 40 killer. The conviction of Pennell led to his death by lethal injection, which made him the first person to be executed in Delaware in 46 years. Following her successful career as a state prosecutor in 1995, she and her partner Charles Oberly opened their own law firm. She then served as chief administrative officer for Newcastle County for one year before she resigned to run for Attorney General of Delaware in 2018. She won the Democratic Party nomination and then defeated her po Republican opponent. Following her first term as General Attorney of Delaware, she then went on to beat her Republican opponent, Julianne Murray, in the 2022 election with 53% of the vote. Her only previous election to the one we're discussing in this video is the election she won to get in the Attorney General office in 2018. Next up, we have Julianne Murray, who took 47% of the vote in the 2022 Attorney General of Delaware election. 
Murray is 53 and is not a native Delawarean like her opponent Jennings. Murray was born in Alexandria, Virginia, where she graduated from Chaparral High School. She then got her bachelor's degree from University of Arizona and then went on to get her law degree from Widener School of Law. Before practicing law, Murray did technical paralegal work and was also involved in law firm management. During her final year at law school, she served as a judicial extern to Justice Henry DuPont Wrigley of the Delaware Supreme Court. In 2012, she opened Murray Law LLC and also participated in daily call-ins on a local radio show to educate people on various aspects of law and get her name out. In 2015, Murray and her partner Ron Phillips merged to join Murray Phillips PA. The two collaborated on criminal defense cases and then eventually welcomed Tom Gay into the practice, renaming it to Law Offices of Murray Phillips and Gay. Murray's most notable case was one brought on by herself against the Delaware Department of Elections. She filed a lawsuit against the Department of Elections over a law that allows voters to request and submit ballots through the mail. She argued that Senate Bill 320, which allows voting by mail, created a permanent, no-excuse, absentee voting system that contradicts the Delaware Constitution, which she won. Prior to this election, she was practicing at her law firm and concentrating on estate planning and administrative cases. Elections previous to the 2022 general attorney of Delaware election that she lost, she also lost the general election of, for governor of Delaware in 2020. For the next part of this video, we'll be talking about campaigns, which is section 5.2 for my AP GoPo students. We'll be talking about campaign goals, how to judge a candidate's character, winning strategies, campaign advertising, and campaign funding. We'll also be talking about the main aspects of both parties' campaigns and what they were doing while they were running for Attorney General. Now let's talk about campaigns. First up, let's talk about the goals of a campaign. A candidate's ultimate goal is to get both parties to vote for them in the election. They must persuade all voters that they are the right person to vote for. A campaign is used to swing independence, activate late, latent partisanship, assign credit, and help voters judge the character of a candidate. So how does a voter judge a candidate's character? Well, they do it through two issues, valiance and positional issues. Valiance issues are issues that everyone agrees on, but it's a matter of whether or not the candidate possesses appropriate qualities or can do it. An example of this is crime or inflation. Positional issues are opposing viewpoints that divide voters. An example of this is abortion or gun control. Now let's talk about the winning strategies. Voters can watch debates to understand a candidate's viewpoints on certain topics. This is a picture of Kathy Jennings in a debate. They can also get voters from name recognition. For example, people may recognize Kathy Jennings from when she helped lock up the Route 40 serial killer, or they might recognize Julianne Murray as someone who previously ran for governor. They can also get votes from something called Get Out the Vote, which are efforts aimed to increase voter turnout. Finally, former positions and future promises made during a campaign can help a candidate. Next up, let's talk about campaign advertising. Ads during the campaign are often short, punchy imagery and emotional appeals. Campaigns often put up signs along the roads, on billboards, or other types of media, which includes TV, newspaper, or social media. Ads shown on TV have progressively gotten more negative. Negative ads are usually funded and put on by interest groups, parties, and other PACs, and can often hurt a candidate's support. These negative ads often suppress turnout and reinforce negative perceptions of the government. Finally, we have gov campaign finance. How do candidates afford all these ads? Most money comes from campaign fundraising, which is the process of raising money to support a political campaign. The money does have to be regulated by the Federal Electoral Commission because of the campaign finance law that governments the raising and spending of money by political campaigns. Now I'm going to show a clip of when I attended the Colonial Republican Committee monthly meeting. In this clip, you will see Julia Murray talking about her lawsuit she filed with the Department of Elections over Senate Bill 320, which allows voting by mail. She claims the bill was unconstitutional and won. When she was speaking at the committee meeting, she also announced that she'll be running for chairman of the Delaware Republican Party. It was super interesting to hear firsthand someone speak on Republican views and hear her speak about an issue she thought needed action. I learned the process to overturn a bill and how it affected my state. And, you know, for those that might or might not remember a lawsuit that happened while somebody was running for attorney general about vote by mail, um, you know, the, you know, the, I did win. 
You, you, I did. Uh, and actually, it's very interesting because apparently Delaware Online has an article coming out about the most influential people in, you know, in Delaware. And Jane Brady and I are there as the law those Republican lawyers that took away vote by mail. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go Constantine. Uh, but you know, what's a big deal is, I mean, so that win about vote by mail made it so, that, and the argument was it has to be done by constitutional amendment. So the General Assembly basically said, okay, fine, we'll go do it by, by a constitutional amendment, but it takes two sessions. So 2024, there cannot be vote by mail. That's the gift of winning in 2022. I also have a clip of when I got to hear from Representative Bombank speak about Delaware Senate Bill 51. We got to hear about the process he went through with his colleagues to see this bill come to fruition. Just like Murray, he saw an issue and took action. It's great to hear someone passionate about change speak. We got to hear about the problems and the ways he hopes to resolve them. While he did not speak on his political opinion, it was still pretty awesome to hear from both parties as he was a Democrat. So the, um, the bill really does three things. It does the, the plastic, the polystyrene, uh, take out food uh, containers, and there are some exceptions for hospitals and, and, and things like that. Um, but that's the biggest part, and there are alternatives. They often cost a little bit more, um, but it's also one where the consumers realize what they're getting, they're like, no, that's good. Uh, we had one legislator who was concerned about that, and then they went to a restaurant that was using compostable takeout container, and they're like, oh my God, this is so much better. So we just, we need to enlighten our colleagues, and we, and we need your help to do that. The other one is plastic straws. There's still times when you need a plastic straw. You can have a medical condition where um, a, a paper straw or a compostable one could have some debris that comes off of it and can um, have you choke if you, again, if you have a particular medical condition. There are some hospitals that, that need to have that and some people may just prefer that. And we permit that, but we you must request it to get it with the exceptions of healthcare and, and some other uh, exceptions. And the last one of the uh, coffee stirrers and the sandwich picks that are plastic. Um, anything compostable, great. Anything plastic, not great. And that's what the bill does. So it's the polystyrene, the takeout containers, the straws, and then the picks uh, and the stirrers. Um, we've got. A both of my activities were state level focused. However, both show topics that are at the national level, like elections, campaigns, and bills. I got to meet Julianne Murray of the Republican Party and Representative Bombeck of the Democratic Party, which helped me hear firsthand the difference in opinions and views of both parties. Getting to meet Julianne Murray was certainly more beneficial as she talked about the election and getting Senate Bill 320 overturned. But hearing Representative Bombeck talk about Senate Bill 51 was also super helpful in understanding how a bill becomes a bill. I am so glad I was pushed to get out of my comfort zone and get first in experience to teach you guys. Thanks for watching Dollar Politics Explained. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.